Uh, I was a chorister in a cathedral system uh, back in the UK, a uh, chorister at Litchfield. Uh, then went on to big school after that, then to university after that. When I got to university, I was not reading music at that time. I was, I'd been sort of pushed down a scientific route slightly. Uh, but I did two years of that and then realized that I couldn't really resist the music thing any longer. So transferred over and majored in music. Then went into the London freelance singing market pool, um, which is big and scary, uh, but seemed to uh, manage to make it work for a couple of years. And then I was my big stroke of luck was that I was appointed to the choir of Westminster Cathedral, the Catholic Cathedral in London, um, when I was 25, I think. And that for me was a big break. Um, of the three cathedral choirs in London, St. Paul's, Westminster Abbey, and the cathedral, the Westminster Cathedral. At that time, I think it was pretty uh, unanimously held view that the cathedral choir was absolutely on top form. Um, and I was very lucky to get appointed there. And, um, sort of then immediately taken seriously by all the freelancing groups. And um, it, it was, I was very busy very quickly, um, which was really terrific. And I had a fantastic time. I joined all the freelancing group, well not joined, but became in that freelance circuit. I worked with the Monteverdi Choir and the Talis Scholars and uh, the English Concert, so many of these other wonderful groups that exist. And uh, did that for the best part of 20 years. And it was, the production side of things came into being with, as it happens, Jeremy, because he was at that time the assistant organist at Ely Cathedral, and he was recording a disc of Vianne and Vidor, I think, I can't remember, there's definitely some Vianne on there, um, at Ely for a small record label, which was a bit of a sort of one-man band. And um, he wanted somebody to come along and listen and just make all the sort of reassuring noises that one wants to hear, particularly when you're playing an organ where you can't necessarily hear what you're doing because the console's not the ideal place to hear the instrument. Um, a little bit like it is here at Fifth Avenue. Um, and uh, so I went along and produced my first disc for him. And I think that was in 1993, 92, 93. No, it may have been before that. I can't remember. Um, and it was just, it was great. I'm, Jeremy's such an amazing player and I remember sitting there just thinking well this is great you know how do people what a great way of making a living just sitting listening to people making fantastic music and being in the slightly weird position of being asked to kind of comment on it criticize it if you like um so I got a bit of a bug for it then I think I've also always been really interested in sound it doesn't matter in a way whether it's any kind of music or indeed any kind of speech if it sounds good on radio, I, I, I'm always sort of captivated by that. I like it. If something's not recorded properly, it just frustrates me. And I think ever since I was a kid, I think I've always been slightly fascinated by how things sound in a, in a broadcast or recorded medium. I had another big break, lucky break, in 2003 when the King Singers um, changed label and got involved with the label that I worked for. And they asked me to, to uh, get involved with their recordings first album was a christmas uh, christmas album made in the in the hot summer of 2003 35 degrees outside singing christmas music um and again that was just one of those moments where suddenly somebody sees what you're doing and they take you seriously um and ever since then really it's been the singing's been less and less part of my life and the production more and more and in fact i hardly sing at all now um and I occupy myself doing this and absolutely love it. And it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's being on the other side of the microphone, an opportunity to pull in all the things that I learned from all the conductors I worked for over the years, which were many. You kind of store those things that you think are worth passing on. You chuck out the things that you don't think are worth, worth passing on. And I've kind of got it in here now. And I, I just, it's great. I, I absolutely adore what I do. I've never been happier professionally than I am at the moment. So it's been a long and slightly weird road, but I've got there in the end. My job is to get the best out of the forces that I'm working with in the available time. If there's lots and lots of time, that's that's great. So you, you can pace yourself a little bit more slowly and, and all the rest of it. But to be honest, for 
budgetary reasons, that's very rare, very rarely the case. It's usually just how to use the time really efficiently. Know that you've got to have this done by then, because if you haven't, you'll start to run late. And if you run late, you can really, it's very difficult to pick it up. Um, you don't want to be in the business where you take three quarters of the time to record half the record so that you've got to do half the record in a quarter of the time, because then of course it's a compromise. So I'm trying to, I'm trying just to make sure that I can achieve the best that is possible with the forces that are available in the space that we're using with all the other things that happen, extraneous noise and all the rest of it. I want to get to the end of that last session thinking, right, we've done our best. Um, if I can achieve that, whatever the standard of the product really, then I've kind of done my job. If I haven't done that, then I've not done my job. One forges relationships with artists and so on over the years. And you just learn to work out what, what it's worth, as you say, you know, burrowing on and seeing whether you can get that one or whether or not it's, it's, it's just not going to work. And whether or not, you, you learn the values, different conductors have different values. Different conductors are obsessed with different things. So you, you have to know exactly what, what matters. But you know, immediately you can call into question the whole business of what making a recording is for. Is it a, is it just a snapshot of what's going on on the day? Um, does it matter if there are little slips and mistakes in it? Some people think so. Some people are obsessed with going to ridiculous lengths to make it completely accurate to the point of it being kind of bonkers. Um, so the, the editing process varies hugely. There are people around who edit the whole thing to bits, occasionally actually at the expense of the music. I think if you over edit something, you can really, really sterilize it. Um, I've just had a project on my desk, which has got, I think, rather too many edits in it. And I think it might show. Um, whereas something which has got 50 joins in it, it that's, that's going to, you're going to keep the overarching structure of what people were thinking. Um, so again, it's all, it's a bit like flying a plane. I imagine it, it's quite a lot of pressure for a fixed period of time in which you're just trying to work out or oh, driving a car, you know, you just got to try and work out the best route to get you as efficiently as possible from where you are to where you've got to be, whether it's two days down the track or a week down the track, or indeed what you've got to achieve by the next, in the next half hour. I mean, what I really want to do is I want to make sure that by the time the product is out, we've you, that it's a rec the, the character of, it, of the music making has to be recognizable. Different, uh, you know, it, it, you've just got to be able to have a feel that you're in the you're in the place with the people. Um, so, to, um, of course, some of that is the responsibility of the of the sound engineer to feel that we've really got a representative sound of what's going on. I'm not obsessed with it being completely accurate. It, it I don't. Live music making isn't completely accurate. So does recording music need to be completely accurate? I think not. Um, I mean, we could talk about this for hours, but it's, it's a tricky argument. Um, I, I personally don't know the answer, but I just, ha I have some kind of clue as to what the people who usually what the artists who are recording, what their values are. I make it my job to know what their values are. And then I know what the, I know the standards at which I am aiming. So when the conductors have, we got it, I can actually answer that question. Yeah, within what you're trying to do, you've got it.